had a light bulb moment the other day when I heard Kevin Costner say this in a movie. Life should be a little nuts. Otherwise, it's just a bunch of Thursdays strung together. How true is that? Most of us live mundane lives. Rolling off bed, going to work, paying our bills, putting food on the table, high strung and stressed, sick and tired of not being able to get off the treadmill of life. No wonder research shows that, especially in the corporate world, the depression rates are as high as 50%, which means every other person is unhappy. Now, I'm a life coach and I teach my clients all about goal setting, gratitude journaling, visualizing and taking action. But you know what? I know this and you know this. None of this matters if you're not happy, which is why teaching how to include fun in life is one of my coaching essentials. And that's what I'm going to introduce you to in this episode, how to have fun in life. So if you're a returning viewer, thank you for your continued support. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I'm Sheila and you're watching Lumia 24. Light on. Right off the bat, if you're feeling depressed or burnt out, you're probably lacking a dose or two of fun in your life. I'm dead serious about fun. Many people think that being adult is all about responsibilities and bringing home the bacon. Of course, paying bills, clearing debts and family thingamies, these are important. But we've forgotten that fun is one of the eight things on the wheel of life that make a balanced life. If you have never heard of this concept of the wheel of life, you may want to watch my earlier video on this. I will link it to this video. As a life coach, I give a mandate to my clients to get fun into their lives. And I'm often so surprised at how vehemently some of them reject this idea. We have been hardwired for struggle. So the concept of fun seems frivolous. It seems trivial and it seems unworthy. I've had grown men weep in my office when I forbid them from logging into their office laptops and instead tell them to go and have an ice cream before we continue our sessions. Maybe they'll have fun someday, they tell me, but not until they've made X amount of money or when they find their right partner or when they've lost X pounds. What they don't realize is that people who achieve such things are the ones who have fun doing them. Having fun is not a diversion from successful life. It is a pathway to it. And that's precisely why I try to squeeze some fun out of everything in my life. Well, okay, most things, whether it is an afternoon lunch with my girlfriends or sneaking in a mid-afternoon pedicure or just putting up my feet and slowing down while I sip hot tea. Injecting some fun into your life makes you more productive. When we are having fun, we naturally feel happier and that makes us more creative, more in the flow. And that part of your brain, which lights up when you have drugs or sex or food, that part lights up making fun the healthier addiction. Take it from Brené Brown. I love her. She's an expert on vulnerability and shame. And in her book, The Gifts of Imperfection, she says, when we value being cool and in control over granting ourselves the freedom to unleash our passionate, goofy, heartfelt and soulful expression of who we are, we betray ourselves. It's true. Some of the happiest relationships I know exist between people who are successful and poised most of the time, but who act weird and goofy in private. So, to make your life easier, I'm going to throw in some random fun ideas that will take very little time and money. Try them. And you never know, it may just totally change your day and even your month. Really, what do you have to lose? Try a new workout. Ditch that Pilates class that you go to very religiously and sample a kickboxing or Zumba class. Phone a friend. Take a break at work or when you're Ubering at home. Speaking to a positive friend is like vitamin for the soul. Act goofy. It's okay. I used to have this very tall ex-colleague who would balance his dinner plate on my head saying that I was the right height for his lunch table. The entire room used to break out into smiles every time he walked in with his lunch. That memory still makes me smile really broadly today. Take a walk. Just get up. 
Start walking, end up somewhere new. You will find your way home, I promise. Walk without a destination. Be alert and open and you might find something awesome you've never noticed before. Sing loudly or dance. Put up your car windows and sing to your heart's content or dance in your own living room. Dance as if no one's watching. Or maybe dance like your Beyonce. Do something creative without a goal in mind. Paint something or put on a kiss the cook apron and serve your everyday home cooking plated master chef style. FaceTime a friend while wearing a face mask. Pretend you're oblivious to the mask. I often FaceTime my sis or my daughter with, the, with my mud mask on. It's always a giggly conversation then. Go shopping. Go into a store you've never shopped in and try on something that you would never ever wear. Walk into a movie theater. Buy a ticket to whichever is playing next. Get a tub of popcorn and make a date of it. These methods are just training wheels. I'm just trying to get you to respond to your sense of fun. Once you've learned this, then it's time to find your own fun print. And that may be the biggest, bravest thing that you'll ever do. Now, if you're serious about fun, here's an easy tool you could practice to get into this wonderful habit of enjoying your life. I like to call this the smile bubble and here's what you do. Take a quick inventory of your life and bring to mind all the things that make your smile bubble up. For instance, I have a couple of friends with who I have the funniest, goofiest conversations on WhatsApp. Whenever I need an energy boost, I go back and read those messages. Just thinking about the conversations make my smile come bobbing up like a beach ball on water. Find your own smile bubble. It can be the thought of your dog hurtling himself into you or when your baby peed in your face all the while cooing and smiling. My sister's favorite fun memory was when she was heavily pregnant and stumbled down some stairs and instead of being worried, she was laughing away because she felt like a sack of potatoes falling down the stairs. See, different folks, different strokes. But keep the memory ready and bring it out and look at it frequently. Make that needle move to the extreme right on your funometer. Let it not be a life of Thursdays. Go do something unproductive. All you have to remember is to enjoy every second of it. Now, on a serious note, if you don't know how to have fun or don't want to have fun, get help. Total funlessness is as serious as a heart attack. I kid you not. Get a medical checkup. The problem may be exhaustion, it may be illness or a chemical imbalance. You may need treatment. Or you may have unhealed emotional wounds such as a trauma or a loss that you've never processed. Consult a therapist. Get help. Get help. Being serious is not normal. You were born with an innate sense of fun. Figure out where or why you lost yours. Having fun is up to you. It's free and healthy and important. Life is too short. Let's enjoy the ride. Give this video a thumbs up and do share it with those who may benefit from this. I'm sure we all know that one uber serious friend who needs to lighten up. And if you haven't done so, subscribe and press the bell icon so that you never miss an update. I need your help in growing my channel and creating a community of like-minded people. So let's spread the light, folks.